This is SRN News. Bluebell is taking heat about its ice cream. Again, details now from SRN's Ron DeRockster. This time, the little creamery in Texas is looking at an independent laboratory report that suggests listeria was found in ice cream made at its Alabama plant. A lawyer says a client had a carton of ice cream tested by the private lab after her 75-year-old husband became ill with meningitis. Bluebell recalled its ice cream after it was linked to listeria illnesses in four states. Listeria is one of several types of bacteria that can cause meningitis, particularly in older adults. Ron DeRockstra, SRN News. The owner of Triple Crown winner American Pharaoh says plans are underway for his champion to race again this year. Ahmed Zayat says he wants the fans to still enjoy something, and he's leaving it up to trainer Bob Baffert to map out the schedule. In the meantime, American Pharaoh's heading home to Kentucky. He is the first Triple Crown winner since affirmed in 1978, and only the 12th in history. More details at srnnews.com. I'm Gordon Griffin. Whether you're restoring a classic car, building a hot rod, or just bringing your daily driver back to like new condition, Steel Rubber Products is your choice for quality automotive rubber parts and weather stripping. As one of the world's award-winning custom car and hot rod builders, Bodie Stroud prefers to work directly with Steel Rubber Products on his award-winning project cars and show vehicles. In addition, Steel Rubber works with top builders like Bodie to confirm the fit and function of its parts as well as develop new products. So for rubber products that fit like the original, last a lifetime, and look like they should, you can't get a better product anywhere. If your dream ride sounds like this, contact Steel Rubber Products and enjoy a ride that sounds like this. Steel Rubber Products, a difference you can hear and quality you can see. Visit us on the web at www.steelrubber.com or call us at 800-447-0849. And remember, if you want the best, you want Steel Rubber Products. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Vasily is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh, new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. Listen to Dr. Pat, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on CRN. of the animals, large and small, sick or injured, don't matter at all. I'm Tina, friend of the critters. I'm Tina, friend to them all. Open up your heart, that's a real good start, and watch them learn to crawl. This is CRN, the Critter Radio Network, and now it's time for Critter Radio with your host, Tina Marie. Welcome to Critter Radio. I am Tina Marie Lithgow, and we are live worldwide, coast to coast, here in the studio. Thank you, Art, in the next room behind the soundproof glass, pushing all the buttons, looking good, my dear. And always by my side, the one and only. She's a model. (laughs) She's an actress. She's an author. (laughs) She is a animal rights professional. She is the West Coast director of... The Companion Animal Protection Society. Hi, Tina. Whoop, whoop. Hi, Carol. Lammy's here Davis. in the house. Lammy is always with us. Lammy, always the, rescued, with us. the rescued Bichon from L.A. Animal Shelter. Yes, he's a dream. He's a dream. He loves coming on the show. Every week he, he, he runs into the car to get here to say hello to Tina. He does. <laughs> he and we have a beautiful a, guest in is, the studio. Yes. Introduce her for me, Carol. Oh, we've got Shelly Watkins, who is the organizer of the National... National Animal Rights Day LA, and she's on the board of directors of Our Planet Theirs Too. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited to talk to you guys. Can I just talk to you about me for one minute? Yeah, I've been, I want to ask you, what happened this week? You had a whole lot of animals come into your rescue. I did. I did. I uh, did. I pull a lot of animals from the shelter. You know, they call me and they say, there's a bunch of, but not very many people like to take pigeons you know they think they're rats with wings which is so not true it's so not true they are heroes anyways i i pulled tons tons of uh animals from the shelter from east valley and and my friend james in burbank he's taking a little break so now i'm pulling his birds from the burbank shelter so it's double 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 whammy wow 
wow. for me. Yeah, yeah. I pulled in a, a baby pigeons j- just hatched. Then someone brought me in two eggs, barely cracked, freezing cold. Oh no! And I had no oh, choice God. but to go in to see if they were alive. And and they were. They wow. were alive. Yeah, but they're in bad shape because. Once they go cold, all the organs and, and everything starts oh, to shut no. down, and I have no idea how long they were cold. Oh, and it, oh, you know. But they're alive. You, actually, one passed away, oh, unfortunately, sorry. and I knew he would because he was bleeding from his little booty, and it was oh, so no. sad. Yeah, I kept him, him alive for twenty four hours, but the other one seems to be pulling through. You know, he, he he's got some fight in him. You know, it's it's very tedious feeding these guys. You know, I have to wear glasses, magnifiers just to to get into their mouth. Oh, so geez. it's been boom 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 Any boom. Any good boom. news from in there? Who's hanging on and doing Oh, well? are you kidding? Tons of good news. Bison, a- a- everybody Baby Ray. Everybody is thriving. Great. Yeah. Baby Ray has a little bit of twisty foot going on. And but you that's know That's cute. Yeah, you know, I don't Baby Ray is the dove I hatched. Um, Aww. yeah, yeah, his, his mother brought me an egg because I released her a while back. She brought me an egg. I hatched it. Yeah. But he's a little slow. He's like, and he still won't eat on his own, but it's all good, you know? Oh, the and the baby raccoon has a baby every, raccoon. All the raccoons go to James in Burbank. Uh, a lot of the possums go to, every, everybody's good. We have raccoons coming in, possums, all kinds oh, of. God. So we got Owls, a lot. We got a lot of news hawks. we're going to talk about. Yeah, stay tuned for more Critter Radio. Tina Marie Lithgow, Carol Raphael Davis. Stay tuned for more. And give us a call at 818-353-1276. 818-353-1276. We look forward to hearing from you. Uh, we're going to be right back. Yes. Stay tuned. Working smarter tips from watching a dog? AARP jobs expert Carrie Hannon says it might sound silly, but her dog does things we can all do to make our jobs more pleasant. Just some simple tips. Starting a day with gusto, and she's in a good mood and she's ready to get rolling. She focuses on one task at a time. She's wholly present in the moment, and I think that's something that so many of us in our jobs get distracted and so forth, and she's always pushing in new directions and exploring. And networking. Hannon offers these daily tips. Skip the beagles. Outline what your ultimate goals might be for your work. But it's really helpful to break it down into small goals. Learn new skills. Cherry pick the goals that you can really work on today. I think you have a greater opportunity to really succeed and find joy in your job. Carrie Hannon's book is Love Your Job. That's Primetime Focus brought to you by AARP. I'm Aileen Ellis. Now back to Critter Radio and your host, Tina Marie. Welcome back, Critter Radio. Tina Marie, Carol Raphael Davis. Let's and Shelly Watkins. And Shelly Watkins. Let's talk to Shelly. Hey, Shelly. Hey. We're so glad you came in. Yes, we it's are. good to be here. Thank you so, so much. So, full full disclosure, um, I I came to one of your events, the National Animal Rights Day last weekend, and I I just have to thank you for putting that together. You put oh. together the most extraordinary Animal Rights Day event uh, right uh, off the pier in Santa Monica, uh, California, Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. It was so beautiful. Thank you. I mean, oh, I, I was just, I was so thrilled to participate. It was great to have you. Describe to people what it looked like. It, it was extraordinary. It was unbelievable. We had so many wonderful people come out and willing to do, celebrities willing to do whatever. And they would hold departed animals or signs uh, to have a little memorial ceremony for all the animals killed at the hands of humans in the United States for the year. Mm-hmm and just really honor them and let all the people standing on the pier see the results of their choices and hopefully make changes. And um, But it was beautiful uh, just to all come together in unity for the animals. How many people participated? How many yeah, were we? I, I, think I, we I never got a full head count. A busy time of year, um, and people would have sick animals, you know, animal rescuers. Yeah. And we ended up with about 140, and um, that was 
Great. We hope next year we'd love to see 500 people on the beach. The yeah, formation yeah. was was spectacular. I mean, the way we were all dressed the same. Yeah, we had it. the um, Our Planet There's Two T-shirts on, mm-hmm. and everyone was standing in a perfect formation. It almost looked like, you know, the Blue Angels. You know how the – Oh, how, yeah. Mm-hmm. It almost looked kind it of did. like that because no matter where you look, people were standing Were there perfectly. a lot of people around you oh, wondering what – It was you, very crowded. Yeah. But we were all dressed in these overalls. And, uh, you know, which aren't, like, not flattering, right? I mean, <laughs> I they're saw not, that. They're, they're like, like medical, medical overall. Are they some kind of sanitary thing because you're actually Tell holding us. a dead animal? Some people are holding animals so they have gloves and those on, and then everybody wears them for this look of unity. Mm-hmm. And um, it's almost a military look, you know. We're unified. We're there. It's quite a sight. You used to hold up pictures now, right? We do bo- both, both now. Both. So we could see happy animals, and this is what we hope for the future. Where do these dead animals come from? Well, some are sanctuaries where they've passed. Some came in in horrible shape, and they just didn't make it, and they'll save them for us. I, I drove up north to pick some up. Some, from, from where? Um, one of the sanctuaries up north, um, they have, like, chickens and pigs and just different ones around and then also some are just on the side of the road there were a couple dead birds you know i've seen a lot of dead birds lately for some reason i was holding a dead bird that well, what's just the died. range of the animals uh, what, there was a pig there were a few pigs uh-huh. and what was really sad was you, you see the tags in their ears so they uh-huh. were just numbers they never had a name they have scars on them, mm-hmm. and they're not even that old. They have bruises, scars. Um, the chickens have, like, their insides are coming out because mm-hmm. they've, they've laid so many eggs. Yeah. And it's just weird to think back when I was a meat eater mm-hmm. to actually see those same organs coming out of a chicken with its feathers, and those are the ones you used to pull out of the inside of the chicken. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just like I can't believe I ever ate that. It's mm-hmm. it's People need to see where it comes from and I think people did get to see that, hopefully make a connection. Yeah, that that stopped me from eating a chicken uh, 20 years ago. I, oh, I rescued, I, I actually, I'm not going to say what I did because <laughs> it's against the law. But I broke some laws. and For the greater good. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the chicken ended up dying in a horrible death. Uh-huh. But I, I saw its meat, and I was never able to eat a chicken after that again. Yeah. It was 20 years ago. That's great. Yeah. Good for you. The yeah. connection. It's a crazy the, story. Maybe one day I'll tell you. Yeah. I think the statues of limitations have ran out, so I don't <laughs> think I can go to jail. <laughs> okay. But you, you say that, like, even the pig with the with the tag in, in mm. his or, no, her, it was a girl, yeah. her ear, she was from a sanctuary? Um, I think some of them. Can came, you not say where exactly well, they came some from? some of or? them were maybe in transport and they died and we were able to get them. And I, I don't see. know exactly how they got them. But, were they preserved um, in some way? They because were they frozen. Didn't, they were frozen. And we cleaned them all. We all met and lovingly cleaned them. We gave them the love they never had. You know, after they died, we mm-hmm. we just honored them and, you know, wish they were still alive. But, um, you know, it was very sad. Yeah, I saw at the end you you guys were wrapping them in. I wasn't there. It was some sort of blanket. What was that? Well, it was just wrapping them in a white sheet, a putting white a rose sheet. on them, uh-huh. and then we we went into a circle and had sort of like a prayer. Mm-hmm. And um, it was also for the activists. You know, we mourn them every day, and mm-hmm. here we got to actually mourn them. Mm-hmm. And while people were watching, and then they will be cremated, and we'll probably have a private ceremony for them because we are attached to them mm-hmm. yeah know. i bet yeah i even though they're gone i can only ima- i can't imagine the ooh, i got the chills yeah yeah it was very heavy and me yeah i am always been repulsed at anything that dies it could be a snail anything mm. it would freak me out but here i was i was cleaning you know raccoons possums chickens mm-hmm. And I didn't have that feeling. It was just more like a labor of love and respect for these animals. Mm-hmm. It was weird. But it was yeah, I didn't have any revulsion either, oddly, yeah. when I was holding one of the dead animals. I was holding a dead bird, yeah. and I didn't feel any revulsion. Like, normally when you see something dead, I think our visceral reaction is, you know, yeah. like, you like that. Away. And 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 I noticed that there were some activists, uh, one of them who I remember notably, um, El- Ellen, Ellen, Eric- Erickson. Ellen Erickson. Mm-hmm. There are photographs of her from from the ceremony where she's hugging 
this this deceased um, female pig, Sal, yeah. Sal, they call she, them. She's mm-hmm. rescued pigs. So yeah. She's really, she loves pigs. She was oh, hugging yeah. this, this this dead pig. Yeah. And there, I think that the photo of her hugging that pig is absolutely heartbreaking. Probably the, the yeah. iconic picture of that day. Really? I think so, too. <clears throat> oh, I, I, I haven't saw seen that. it. I want to see it. I'll show it to you. Yeah, There's also amazing. a new video I saw that oh, somebody yeah. took with a drone overhead, and it's, really? I just posted it on my Facebook page, and it it's really powerful. It's the and, and Cameron Wapner's video that he just put out this yeah, morning was amazing. Right. You'll have to look at my Facebook to I see will. the new one. You'll be blown away. Oh, I can't It was really, you know, it was really Beautiful. important to a lot of us, and that's why I wanted to thank you and have you on the show. It was so important for us to be, get a chance to get together and yes. have that same grieving moment all together surrounded right. by love. And that was really important to so many people because, you know, we're heartbroken every single day. And to be able mm-hmm. to just be able to hug each other mm-hmm. and, and to come together in a a non-denominational, totally secular kind of prayer mm-hmm. uh, to send these animals off. You know that we were we were all together, and it, it, it was, was it was, it was a, a wonderful feeling, a very loving and serene moment. It stayed with there me. There was for no sure. crazies like off the sides, you yes. know, hanging off the there pier. There was that one man. Hey, you crazy <laughs> ladies! One man was like, Tell "What? Them. Tell me." He was <laughs> yelling. It was a David Sobel, I think. Yeah, uh, there's got- a video, and he's saying, "You're you're wrecking." You're wrecking the world or something. What did he say? The environment or, and, um, eat meat and no, he, he was swearing. Off. He was swearing. Yeah, he was swearing. I'm not going to say, but he was flipping us off and yeah. unhinged. Like, oh my gosh. It just shows you how, how people are against. They don't want to change, but I wish he'd sit down and watch earthlings or something. And yeah, you know, he just doesn't know. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, stay tuned for more Critter Radio. Our number is 818-353-1276. If you want to give us a call, ask us a question, your thoughts, your theories, stay tuned for more Critter Radio. Call us up, 818-353-1276. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. They found me a place for what she could afford, and it was magnificent. We're now... Very confident that she's safe, and they just helped every step of the way, and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, call a place for mom. This is a free service, and you can trust them to help you. If you're struggling to find reliable senior living information for your mom or dad, then call or go online to get the free help you need during this turbulent time. Call now, 800-471-5173, 800-471-5173. You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet, fresh asparagus, hollandaise on the side, a filet, medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare, close your eyes, and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. The sizzle. The sizzle of a Ruth's Chris steak. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef broiled to perfection at 1800 degrees some call it a sizzle we call it an anthem as the waiter approaches you think is this one mine or that one ruth's chris steakhouse like ruth always said life's too short to eat anywhere else Make a reservation online at rootschris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. Are you worried about losing your home to foreclosure? If you've been threatened with foreclosure or receive legal papers from your bank, you have approximately 30 days to respond. If you do not respond, you could lose your home. You have rights. Act now to protect your rights. You can stay in your home. 
Many times you can even modify your loan. The bottom line is you can get past this, but you must act right now. If you've been served by your bank and you're worried about losing your home to foreclosure, now is the time to fight back and save your home. Time is limited, so call the professionals at National Foreclosure Defense right now. 800-515-6309. 800-515-6309. 800-515-6309. 800-515-6309. That number again is 800-515-6309. It's Critter Radio with Tina Marie. Welcome back, Critter Radio. Tina Marie, Carol Raphael Davis, and Shelly. More with Shelly. Let's talk to Sher- Shelly, Carol. Look at Lamb. <laughs> Lammy. Lammy likes Shelly, too. It's such a lie. I like Lammy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a love story. <laughs> so tell us how, I mean, after after this grieving event, this, this kind of funereal thing, which, oh, I, I, by the way, I wanted to tell you, whoever thought of getting Sheena Gao to play oh, that that beautiful gosh. violin piece by Samuel Barber during the ceremony. Yes. It was to die for. Thank you very much. <laughs> Actually, we had these serendipitous moments like, mm-hmm. you know, Kyle that you sang with. Yeah. Well, I ran into him just leafleting at Beer Fest mm-hmm. and we started talking and he gave me his card and it had two guitars on it and I said, "Oh, would you like to perform?" And then he helped us with the sound system and everything. It was amazing. Sheena yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was a couple days before she messaged me and wanted to be in the ceremony, and I, I just saw that she played the violin, and I said, would would you like to play the violin? Mm. She and was good, huh? Alam had a great idea. The founder of NARD had a great idea. Um can't remember the name of the song she played, but he wanted something sad and beautiful. It was by Samuel Barber. It's a she well-known piece. was amazing yeah um, it was beautiful yeah. nobody videoed that oh yeah oh yeah it was it was at the beginning um the very beginning first we start off with like a siren kind of gets everybody's attention mm-hmm. and then uh she started playing that beautiful piece and she's gorgeous herself yeah, and she? compassionate Stunning. Yeah. yeah it was really amazing Nice. Stunning. So how so lucky was that? It was incredible. Yeah. A lot of fortuitous things happened. Exactly. And then a- after the really mournful uh, aspect of the ceremony, it, it turned into some, like, Woodstock fest. <laughs> it was fantastic. Why, it was happened? a love fest, it was. I think. Huh? I, it was kind of what I was hoping for NARD to be, everybody coming together for our common goal and celebrating each other and uh-huh. our wonderful lifestyle and Oh my gosh, it was, it was so fun. It seemed surreal the next day. <laughs> I wanted to go back to it. It was like the perfect world. <laughs> we Why, what was happening? Well, Take was like, me there. It was right out of Woodstock. <laughs> you know, everybody was gyrating and I performed with a lot of other people uh, and yeah. everybody was singing. So and people dancing, were dancing, speakers. getting their yeah. groove on. Speaker, yeah. We they had, even had a muscle flex off. We had a vegan flex contest <laughs> and Dave Carter was in it and, uh, who else? The, three, the 300 pound vegan. The 300 pound vegan Defensive athlete. Li- NFL Defensive player. Line. That was my question to you before the show. Is there such thing as an overweight vegan? And oh, says, yeah. Yes. And that yeah. blew my mind. Very I'm easy like, to really? do. Really? Sugar, yeah. uh, flour, you know, you can do that. Veganism is about compassion to animals. Um, and being healthy is a whole, you kind of lead into that thing, though. Huh? You start knowing more about the food you eat. Yeah. And you get, you're blessed in so many ways from just doing something compassionate for animals. You right. end up healthier. I lost 25 pounds right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And, um, just, it's such a beautiful life. You're not eating all that suffering anymore. Yeah. So it's on a spiritual level, health mm-hmm. level. Then I didn't even know a single vegan when I went vegan. And really? Not one. So what, what, what drew you to <laughs> vegan? Yeah. I was eating lunch one day, 2006, September 14th. Whoa, she remembers the date. <laughs> this wow. is I'm going to start getting chills now. This is going to be big. <laughs> I was watching TV at lunch, you know, probably eating a ham sandwich. And um, this local cable access channel, I just saw this beautiful woman named Vivian Nantel. She's an artist and animal rights advocate. And she started talking about animals. And I go, okay, i got to listen to this because I've always had that in me. And uh, then she showed a video called Chew on This, and it's just a short video about being vegan. It wasn't the worst thing you'd ever watch, but I put down my food, and I said, I'm never eating an animal again. What was the video? 
It, it said different reasons to go vegan, and it was showing some clips of what happens to animals, mm. and and it's what I needed to see all along. I should have seen this when I was like about 20. how they how they're killed, how they're killed, and the all slaughterhouses. Oh yeah, just how they're treated, even in the and farms. Treated, it's, it's never yeah. good. They're just a commodity. Yeah. But here's the thing: like I told my daughter. I said, I'm going vegan. I, I just can't do it anymore. She goes, it's vegan, Mom. Vegan? I, said, I don't know. <laughs> so I didn't know what I was going to do. And I, I happened the next day to go to CVS Pharmacy, and I was going to get a card for my sister's birthday. And I wanted to ask the pharmacist if he had my daughter's migraine medicine because they had just switched from Save-On to CVS. So I walk up, and the weird thing, it seemed like there was nobody in the store. It was, like, empty in this this big counter and I'm looking around, and I look down, and there's a complete idiot, idiot's guide to going vegan, oh. to a vegan lifestyle, oh. sitting there right in front of me. Like, somebody must have purposely left it there. And so I read that, and I learned all there. I needed to know. And now I have thousands of vegan friends, and, you know, it's, it's wow. a beautiful thing. I didn't even know there was such a book. Maybe I'll get it. Complete Idiot's Guide to Vegan <clears throat> Living. And it's an older one. There's lots of really good books. Oh, out there's there. so many. Yeah. yeah. But it was pretty amazing. We're going to take a quick break. Carol, shoot out the number. Oh, yeah. Give us a call on Critter Talk at 818-353-1276. That number again is 818-353-1276. We look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions about going vegan, about National Animal Rights Day, Mm -hmm. we'll be right back. Stay tuned. CRN travelers, relax at the beautiful Fountain Grove Inn and Conference Center in Santa Rosa, California. Come to quality and come to luxury. Experience the newly renovated guest rooms. They're generously sized and they're decorated in the Tuscan tradition. They have great, incredible pillow top mattresses, luxurious linens, and down filled comforters. The Fountain Grove Inn also offers complimentary Wi Fi and internet access. There's warm cookies and coffee every evening in the hotel lobby, and you can visit the newly remodeled Equus Restaurant and Equus Lounge with its new wine bar. It's the ideal place to relax and enjoy a glass of wine and watch our What's Cooking on Wine show on CRN with host Larry Van Alst on Wednesdays. It's the Fountain Grove Inn Hotel and Conference Center located in the heart of Sonoma Wine Country. It's easily located in Santa Rosa off the 101 Fountain Grove Parkway exit. Call 707-578-6101. That's 707-578-6101 or visit FountainGroveIn.com. You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet, fresh asparagus, hollandaise on the side, a filet, medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare, close your eyes, and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. The sizzle. The sizzle of a Ruth's Chris steak. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef. Broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees. Some call it a sizzle. We call it an anthem. As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at ruthschris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. Individuals and businesses with tax problems. Listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control of your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank accounts, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problem now by calling the experts at U.S. Tax Shield and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new law that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. U.S. Tax Shield offers a price protection guaranteed quote to get you protected today. U.S. Tax Shield is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, so call now, 800-351-8614. That's 800-351-8614. U.S. Tax Shield, 800-351-8614. 
What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a non profit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free 3-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. Back now to Critter Radio and your host, Tina Marie. Welcome back, Critter Radio, Tina Marie, Carol, Raphael, Davis. What are you guys chatting about over there? Can you chatterbox? Hey, can you include me in the conversation, please? Yeah. Okay. We're we're chatting away about you. Did you did you want to talk more about Nard? Um, I think we covered it pretty much. Um, it's in like eight different cities, and we have a lot of people that want to do it next year in their city. One from Las Vegas, and when's and the next then, one? And then I want to do one in France because you know I live half the year in France. I want to do one in Nice. I, and you're welcome to come, both of you. Is that I where you know. go, Nice? Is that yes. where you live also? Nice. Yeah. I can't wait. So you're there six months, and then you're here six months. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh. but I think it would be great to do there, and and we have the most amazing activists over there. Yeah. I see, I've yeah, seen yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So tell us about what happened yesterday. What happened yesterday? Yesterday, yesterday was Sea World Empty the Tanks protest, and there were like three hundred people there, and we got so much support from people driving by. It used to be we didn't get so much, and now more and more people are learning about what happens to these poor orcas and all the other animals and the concrete bathtubs, you know, mm-hmm. and so everybody's honking and. And supporting us. So what did you do? I, you, I stood, on the news. you stood outside of SeaWorld? Yeah, we were outside of SeaWorld. Outside the, ga- outside, the, outside the gates, not inside. And it was, a, it was like in Miami. It was all the different, um, oh gosh, was it Vancouver? Oh, there Vancouver. was one that they oh, actually, oh, oh. did Vancouver. you see that? Oh man. <laughs> oh. Come in. Oh. It's amazing. They went inside. They went inside the Marine Park okay. in Vancouver. Okay. And while the woman is, <laughs> is talking about the show, this, this, this woman who works there going, and audience members, you're going to see the orca jump through the air. And all of a sudden. <laughs> and they're yelling 15, outside. They're yelling outside. And 15 or 20 people had bought, animal rights activists had bought tickets, right? Yeah. And they unfurled their banner. Still, you know, die, they, they die here and they're still suffering. It was amazing. Fabulous. Oh. And they were there for a while. Oh, like, yeah. a lot of places, they get these big bullies coming to, like, tear, rip them out of their hands, but they were kind of standoffish. I think they're used to just following orders and doing whatever. Mm-hmm. And so they had it there for a while. And, um, so at first the girl said something about, can we have an applause? And nobody did anything. And then when she said it again, they, they applauded, you know, uh-huh. the audience, but they, they know better now, I think. They'll ah. go home and probably research. And yeah. See. Those. That's what it's all about. Wow. Well, SeaWorld is facing a major backlash ever since that movie Blackfish came out. Um, before that, it was just a few activists kind of hanging around and telling each other on social media that it was really cruel to incarcerate these uh, marine animals in, in these tiny, what, what the equivalent of a bathtub. And uh, so they've fought back. And they've actually changed some regulations of theirs where they're making they're making the tiny little bathtubs just a little bit bigger into a bigger yeah. bathtub. Right? <laughs> they're adding a hot tub to it. Maybe <laughs> I don't think that's good. Yeah. yeah. And then they've got this new. Oh, their their stock went down. Right. Their as a result of the animal rights activism, oh, their attendance went down. Their attendance went down. And now they've wow. they're they're fighting back with a campaign. We love we, we love them, and we know you do too. Talking about their animals uh-huh. that they're incarcerating and torturing. These animals mm. belong in the wild. Absolutely. Yeah, but they can't go back to the wild after that, can they? Well, then they should be in a sanctuary, in a not sanctuary. in a for-profit prison. A sanctuary where they would have much bigger quarters? 
bigger quarters. They won't have to listen to loud music and fireworks all summer that must wreak havoc on their echolocation and everything else. They're, they're, they don't take that into consideration. Oh, they, they don't no. care about them. They money. care about money, period. You know, that's it. It's They'll say, money. oh, we save these animals and these animal, animals will save where animals. Where do they get them from? Don't. Where, where do the they wild. Get them? Enslave them. So they go to the ocean and they, they buy pick, them. They pick up a baby? Yeah. They pick Separate up a baby. Separate it from their Separate it from the mother. Yeah. And then how do they train it? Oh. They deny food, don't making, they? Making, making them do it. Starve them? Unnatural things. They starve them? It's completely unnatural what they, they do. When they're feeding them fish, every time they do a trick, that kind of tells you that they they want that fish I'll really do bad. anything yeah. for, for that fish. Please right. just give so it to So they really me. care about their animals. <laughs> Everybody should go see the movie Blackfish. Or I think, I've I never think even you, heard of it. Yeah. It's it's a must see. It is. It's a must see to learn about what happens not just at SeaWorld, but to learn what happens in marine parks. Which yeah. you know, I'll say it again, they're just aquatic prisons. It's like mm-hmm. the circus. prisons underwater. It's like any any place an animal is used, they always lose. So eventually you know? they'll they will be shut down. Maybe not in our lifetime, but it's coming, right? I think it'll happen. I think they'll switch over to something different, like animatronic animals. Kids well, the circuses are button d- buttoning down now, aren't they, with the animals? No. Some of them? No. No, not no, even not. a little bit? No. Not really. No. They say they're getting rid of the ele- elephants. Well, they'll just take them somewhere else and probably still breed them and sell them to a- elephant program. rides. Mm-hmm. And they'll mm-hmm. use other – they're bringing in, like, camels is what I heard. I, I don't know if that's true, but – Yes, they are. Ring, Ringling is now replacing the elephants because of animal rights activism. They're taking animals off of their, their circus tour uh-huh. and uh, putting them in a breeding park and replacing them with camels. So, you know, the bo- we, we did have some legislation that passed here uh, in in Los Angeles and on a state level about bull hooks. So they're not allowed to use the bull hooks. But they can torture them with something else. And, and, and that legislation mm-hmm. does nothing to protect the other animals who are suffering in circuses and roadsides. What do they do with the bull hook? They hit them with it or do they poke them? They, they control them with, with, a, with a sharp instrument called a bull hook. And there's uh-huh. lots of video of them beating them, too, behind the scenes. And blow torching. What's that? Oh, what do they blow torch them. That's yeah, nice and they beat me. them with bats. And they tie them up as babies. I mean, it's just so hard. I've seen them tied up as babies. And they they transport them like their life is being on a train that they barely fit in, Mm. going from concrete jungle to concrete jungle. Mm. And the other animals are just stuck in cages, and, and they start doing that. That, that thing, that yeah, thing. oh yeah, yeah. That, that where they're just moving, that waddling. That's yeah. a coping mechanism with going yeah. insane, like prison inmates do. They and, sit there and like the orphans that are just by themselves in a crib, you know, they do the same thing. They rock. Mm-hmm. They're trying to comfort themselves. It's sickening. Yeah, it is. I yeah. can't believe that they are still in this day getting away with telling the public that this is entertainment for families <laughs> and, that the, and that they're into conservation and that these animals aren't surviving in the wild anyway, so they're actually saving them. There's a lot more people that know Whoa. now than, yeah. than before. It, it's coming. They're coming around. It's coming. Is Every, it? Oh, it is. You think so? I do. Really? I do. I think it there's is, too. So it's slow, though, and we're frustrated because we want it to happen now. There's but, so much more know. people involved. I see it on, the, uh, on social media. Everybody's like... Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? They're, yeah, I can see it happening. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned for more Critter Radio. Tina Marie, Carol Raphael Davis, and Shelly. Shelly Watkins. Shelly Watkins. Give us a call, 818-353-1276, 818-353-1276. Stay tuned for Critter Radio. We're going to be right back. Located in the heart of Maui's premier resort, Kanapali Beach Hotel is officially recognized as Hawaii's most Hawaiian hotel and the number one best value in Hawaii. With a range of accommodations and affordable dining options, this is the ideal setting to turn Hawaiian dreams into lifelong memories. Live Hawaiian entertainment every evening, free year-round children's programs, 
Weekly arts and crafts fairs, welcome breakfast, and departure Kukui Lay ceremonies add to the value. Swim in the whale-shaped pool. Indulge in the fabulous spa and hotel salon. Enjoy Hawaiian hospitality at its best at the Ka'anapali Beach Hotel. Call 800-262-8450 or go to kbhmaui.com. That's kbhmaui.com. Aloha. Have you ever considered adding a home security system but thought it would be too expensive? Here's the good news. There's never been a more affordable time to help protect your home, valuables, and your loved ones. You can now get a $100 Visa card from Protect Your Home, your authorized ADT dealer, with the installation of a new ADT-monitored system. Here's even better news. Your new system, worth $850, is free. You pay just a $99 installation charge and purchase monthly monitoring for less than $2 a day. Call Protect Your Home today at one 866 Six 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 nine eighty nine fifty four. That's one eight six 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 nine eighty nine fifty four. Get the peace of mind that comes with owning an ADT monitored system plus a one hundred dollar Visa card from Protect Your Home. Call now one eight six 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 nine eighty nine fifty four. That's one eight six 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 nine eighty nine fifty four. Thirty six month monitoring contract required. General terms and conditions apply. Visit protectyourhome dot com forward slash terms. Let's get back to Tina Marie on Ritter Radio. Welcome back, Tina Marie. I was zoning out there for a minute. Zoning out? Yeah. Sunday. How dare you zone well, out? Well, I'm thinking like, okay, this one needs to be fed. That one needs to be fed. Aww. This one, uh, yeah, his heat pad's going to be okay. And it's, it's just what we were talking about. I, I, Maybe I dream about this. Maybe should pay more attention to us if we were like this. <laughs> yeah. mouths wide hey, open if you like were hurt, bird. If you were hurt or sick, I'd be on you. <laughs> if you were hurt or sick, you have to call Tina. Yes. Tina. I have been no- I have been known to save a few. I have saved a few humans. <laughs> Sorry. You know, we're laughing right now and I'm, I have to say I I woke up happy today. This is a, a very happy weekend for me. Okay. Because we are celebrating in France which is my home country. Yes. We're celebrating the fact that bullfighting has finally, on Friday this happened, okay. finally been taken off the list of what they call the, the, the national heritage list. It's wow. the, the patrimony that? list. What does that mean? Cultural heritage. You know, these countries in Europe, they have lists. Uh, that are created by UNESCO. Uh, so you'll have like the Eiffel Tower, you'll have the Louvre, you'll have this or that. Those are material things that are part of the cultural heritage list. Well, part of the immaterial cultural heritage list of France, bullfighting was on it. The yeah. art of bullfighting. And when I say art, I say art with quotes around it because th- it's not very artistic. And matadors who kill, who stab, torture, and kill bulls mm. for entertainment are hardly artists. So anyway, a, a, a Paris court yeah. has kicked them off the list for it's, good. So what does this mean? It yeah. means that the bullfighting industry mm-hmm. can no longer claim that they have any cultural excuse to continue committing acts of grave violence towards bulls and horses in the bullfighting rings That's in amazing. southern France. So, they're, so they, they can't do it anymore? That, no, they can do it, they can but do they it. can no longer use the excuse. Oh, they can't claim. That they cannot claim that this is a uh, a part of French national heritage. Ah, they can't, okay, they can't claim that. They can't say That's it. Amazing. They're no longer on the list. Ooh. That means now now these people are just simply bull torturers and horse torturers because, you know, horses get killed in the bullfighting yeah. ring oh. as well. I, I, I don't know anything about We're it. We're going to do a whole show on bullfighting and how disgusting it is, mm-hmm. and it's and it's – Illegal in 90% of France. Only 10% of French territory still allows this horrific blood sport. And uh, this is all new to me. And every bull dies or does the bull ever win? No. 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 The bull never. No. The the bull might get some revenge. Uh, Things do happen. Has a bull ever won? 
No, no, they don't win. They get killed. They're all killed. They They're don't killed. win. And Slowly the, and painfully. But what if the bull attacks him and, and knocks him unconscious? What happens? Well, they'll, they'll bring in other matadors. Oh, they have standbys. Oh, yeah. They've got a lot of standbys. And they've got music and they've got dancing. And, and the thing is, is that these poor animals are, oh, are prepared hear. to not be able to fight back. They've got Vaseline yeah. in their, in their eyes. They've got newspaper in their ears. They can't hear. They can't see. Is they've that been what a, they do to yeah, them? Yeah, they, they have them in a dark, uh, 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 a dark, uh, what do they call that? Oh, a, a, uh, uh, oh I'm, I'm looking for the word. In a, in a, can, pen? In a, can, uh, a pen. No, it's not a pen. It's on wheels. Oh, a caravan. They've got them. In a, they brought them. That. They're transporting them. They're in the complete oh, darkness. God. So when they come out, they're blinded by the light, and they're brought directly into this place Sickening. to face their murderers, and they're tortured to death. It's horrible. But anyway, the mm. good news is oh, yeah. is hey, that the bull torturers news. and the bullfighting industry can no longer claim that they are part of the cultural heritage of France, which was okay. baloney wow. to begin with. That's fantastic. Okay, so this is good. We're gaining ground. I We're gaining the ground. Good news. Yeah. yeah, good news. We need a good news. <gasps> yes. Because this eats away at us, doesn't it? We're getting more and more good news, but we need a whole lot more. Yeah. You know. You were saying you have trouble going to sleep at night because of how well, affected you are by this. It's almost anything I'm doing. If I'm... At the dentist, I think about animals that are, they do research on. Like, I've got Novocaine, and I'm still terrified, and it still hurts. If I'm sleeping at night in my comfortable bed, I'll think about a pig in a gestation crate that can't move. You yeah. always, I always compare my circumstance to animals. It's just natural. You know, I think how lucky I am mm -hmm. and to know that that's happening to what millions. What about animal testing? You're an animal rights professional, Carol. What, what do you know about the animal That's testing. a whole show. It is. Just touch that on is. it for me, though. <laughs> oh. What? Well, big, big pharma, big pharma and the biomedical research industry makes their living with with clinical trials that torture animals on a daily basis, and they still don't have cures for what they're getting their money for. The whole, the whole thing is rotten to the core. It's completely corrupt. Mm -hmm. It really is. And they test... You don't know what products, so we all can't. everything, you everything, can everything is tested on animals. We'll yeah. have somebody in. We'll do a we'll do a whole show on it. We'll have the physicians for responsible medicine come in and talk to us about oh, that. Right. But yeah, it's but hard to turn it off at night. Mind. Yeah, they're, they're always on your mind. Like you know, you can't really forget about them because you know it's happening twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. There is a, a kill counter. You could go to like adapt a d a p t t. I don't know if it's dot com or dot net, but there's mm -hmm. a kill counter. And it's just flipping, flipping, flipping all the different animals, which one, how many are, are dying at that point in the world. It's crazy. Really? Yeah. You, then you realize how, how bad it is and what it's destroying our world, too. That one thing they did in that country a, a month ago or, oh, or it came. What? Nepal? Yeah. That festival. I never even oh, knew the that existed. The Nepalese festival where they killed 500,000 animals during one festival. Yeah. I've yeah. never... That that's all new to me. That's the first time I've ever I feel seen sorry it. for the animal rights activists in Nepal. I know there are oh, a few of them. The pain must be they must be anguished. Oh God. I would love to never mind, I better not say it. Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna take a great uh, a, a break. <laughs> a great break. Yeah. <laughs> More Critter Radio, Tina Marie, Carol Raphael Davis and Shelley. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. Give us a call, 818 353 1276. 818 353 1276. Stay tuned. Homeowners, now is the season to be thinking about your roof, because all it takes is one storm to turn a small roof problem into a major leak. If it's time for a new roof, call Sears at 888-465-9720. You can save $500 if you call right now. Sears licensed, fully insured contractors can get your roofing job done right. Just call 888-465-9720. Sears has a variety of shingles and styles that are built for long-lasting performance, and you'll save $500 if you call now. So call Sears for a free and home consultation at 888-465-9720. Hurry, offer ends soon. Not available in all areas. Installation provided by Sears authorized licensed contractors. License information available upon request. That's Sears Roofing. Call right now and save $500. Call 888-465-9720. 888-465-9720. Call Sears now and get that roof repaired. Call 888-465-9720. 
You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet. Fresh asparagus. Hollandaise on the side. A filet. Medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare. Close your eyes and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. The sizzle. The sizzle of a Roots Chris steak. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef. Broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees. Some call it a sizzle. We call it an anthem. As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at ruthschris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a non profit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free 3-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. Back now to Critter Radio and your host, Tina Marie. Welcome back. Tina Marie, Carol Raphael Davis. What are we talking about? Shelly Watkins, we're talking about how you can't get to sleep at night because you're thinking of stuff. How do you turn well, it off at night? It's, it's hard sometimes because you see these images during the day. You're learning about more and more things that are happening to animals that each one trumps the other. You, you think you've seen it all, mm-hmm. and then you see something else, like maybe the pigs that got sick in Korea. That really hit me, and they were dumping them alive into a big, just in case they were sick, into a big hole and burying them. That one really stuck with me. It was hard to fall asleep at night. But then just thinking about the daily standard practices they go to through, you know, the mutilations and everything that happens to them without any painkillers, mm-hmm. it's hard to sleep you're in your comfortable bed. Yeah. You feel a little guilty, mm. like, and you also feel grateful. I'm lucky I'm not born an animal, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, shouldn't happen to them. A so food animal, anyway. A food or clothing or, a yeah. she, you know, lamb, wool. Mm-hmm. It's all really bad. So, yeah. yeah, it's hard to turn off sometimes. Yeah. I just have to really separate from it. I you meditate at night. You do? That's yeah. great. I have to meditate in order to sleep. Otherwise, I can't shut off my brain. How do you do it? And How my do you brain, do well, the, the hardest part for me is shutting off my brain. That's been the t- toughest thing. You just so sit I can't there and take, don't think about I anything? cannot take naps yeah. because my brain is so full of horror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. with most, yeah. most social you justice look, you activists. You guys look at this stuff, don't you? All day long. We're yeah. aware. Once you're aware, you want to know everything. Yeah. See, a lot of people informed. won't look. I know. Uh uh-uh, uh, they're not looking. I can't look. They can't look at what they're causing. That's Mm-mm. what's so frustrating. So right. I think they have to be forced to look at it. Right. Yeah. But they don't want to see it. Like a clockwork orange. <laughs> Let's just go yeah. make them <laughs> that would be great. They they should really be forced to look at it. Yeah. I think if everybody well, wasn't it Paul McCartney who said that if uh slaughterhouses had, had glass, glass walls, walls, we'd all be vegetarian. Oh uh, yeah. 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 Be yeah. vegan. It, it, yeah, I believe that. I think he said separate. vegetarian. Yeah, but vegetarian. Yeah. I think he knows probably now. <laughs> I don't know if he's vegan. I think he's vegetarian. Oh well, Paul. I don't know. I well, love you, Paul. Paul yeah. is hanging out doing stuff with Kanye and fur, oh, fur bear, geez. fur bearing what? artists. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. What kind of hypocrisy is that? Him if you're really Kanye? a vegan, why the hell are you, oops, excuse me, right. but why the heck are you getting together with well, people like Kanye West who's just, you know, the biggest fur promoter there is? Hopefully he's trying to educate him. What, yeah. by promoting his music? Uh, that's <laughs> I don't true. think so. I'm, I'm no. so hopeful. I'm sure, <laughs> so I'm sure those, uh. those two are going to st- jump on the bandwagon any time now. Who? The, the old Kim Kim and Kanye. Are you kidding? 
kidding I me? Think, I, I think they, they will. They are so not away. I think they will. No, they will. It's coming. You heard it here first. What, what you think that genetically they're going to grow a brain? I, I do. I think, well, <laughs> it may not be real, but just for uh, publicity, I think they're going to jump on the I think bandwagon. they're two of the most stupid, self-involved, narcissistic jerks there are in celebrity. I agree, bill. but you heard it here first. there's no way besides you can't grow empathy you either have empathy or you don't it's genetic those are facts so there are people who are empathic and there's so there's the sociopath next door if you've never read the book i wondered about that yeah have you ever read the book the sociopath and others don't yeah because you have the empathy gene i have the empathy gene you have it bad you have it uh, bad it it's like off the charts ridiculous you have it bad yeah i do but that's why i love you yeah that is why yeah i only like people who are empathic and whenever i meet people who have no empathy you can always see them because they pretend to have empathy it is yeah we're like the bundies of the world uh, are we done I, I thought so. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, take, take us out, Carol. Oh, I would say. Shelly Walker, thank lesson. you so much for coming on our show. We just loved having thank you. you. You're the best. Thank me. you very much. That's great of you guys to have Thrilled. me. And it. thank you all for listening to yeah. Critter Talk, right? Thank you, Carol. You bring it. You bring it every week, girl. And you I bring just it. love you. Love you. Okay, tune in live with us every Sunday, 12 noon Pacific time. Thank you, Art. In the next, yeah, art, in the next thanks, room. Art. art, art goes above and beyond for us over here, and we love you. He didn't make us do any push-ups this week. You know what? I didn't get yelled at one time. Today. We didn't get yelled at this week. Yelled at. <laughs> Normally, I'm getting this through the window. <laughs> okay, now he's doing it. Hurry up. See you next week. See you next week, folks. CRN Digital Talk Radio prides itself on being the station of every situation. Of course, you can always listen live through your local cable TV provider, as well as on our website at crntalk.com. But if cutting-edge technology is more your style, you'll be happy to know that CRN is now available on Wi-Fi radio. Simply log on to Receiva.com. That's R-E-C-I-V-A dot com, and look for CRN. You can access all of our great shows and listen live anywhere in the world. Be part of your favorite shows and get the full CRN listening experience you would have with any traditional radio, podcast, or a live stream from our website. For more information on where or how to listen, and for a full list of our programming, log on to crntalk.com and create your own listening experience today. The Radio Channel. With SRN News, I'm Gordon Griffin. German Chancellor Angela Merkel says she expects the G7 leaders to send a united signal that sanctions against Russia can only be softened if a February peace accord for eastern Ukraine is implemented. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest says that the U.S. and European allies appear to have support in continuing sanctions against Russia. As best I can tell, uh, the the way that President Putin's name comes up uh, is that it comes up in the context of... Uh, the leader of a country that is increasingly isolated from the international community. European Council President Donald Tusk says he wants to see the G7 leaders firmly united in sanctions against Russia for invading Ukraine. If anyone wants to start a debate about changing the sanctions regime, the discussion could only be about strengthening it. Also, that's rnews.com. Ukraine's border guard service says one of its cutters exploded while in patrol today off the shore of the strategic port city of Maripol. The regional police department says that the boat hit an explosive device but did not give further details. Six crewmen were injured. Rescuers have been searching for a seventh. Maripol is the major coastal city between mainland Russia and the Russia annex Crimean Peninsula. Preliminary election results in Turkey's parliamentary election suggest that the ruling party could lose its simple majority in parliament. State-run TRT television says with about 97 percent of the vote counted, the Justice and Development Party of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is well ahead of other parties with the support of just over 41 percent of voters. But the projections have it around 260 seats, 16 below the minimum to keep its majority. Two men are in custody after dawn raids on their homes in the western suburbs of Paris. France's interior minister says the men are suspected of assisting a 24-year-old Algerian student who stands accused of plotting a terrorist attack